to my beautiful apartment. Have you ever killed plants? Well, I did and I killed so many of them that at some point I just lost hope into believing that I can grow plants at home. Uh, all of my previous mistakes were related to buying plants from the supermarket and they would die on me really, really fast. When I went to the nursery, they gave me the appropriate plants for my um, environment at home. They gave me tips, they gave me all sorts of fertilizers. And now I could say that I'm a real proud mother of an urban jungle that I have in my apartment. Stick with this video if you wanna see all of my plants and I'll give you tips and tricks. All of them are extremely easy plants to take care of at home. And in the second part of the video, I'll be replanting and repotting some of the seedlings and cuttings that we have been growing during the last one month. Um, one of the first plants in our collection was this beautiful spatifilum. I'll give you. It's so lush, the crown is so thick. Even when we bought it, it was, it was very green, very luxurious. And once in a while it gets this white flowers. We just cut one recently. But even when it's green, it's really, really beautiful. Uh, this is also known as a peace lily and it's really easy to care. The majority of people don't know when they need to water the plants and this plant gives you tips. So when the um, leaves start drooping like this, it means that it's thirsty. Once uh, we went away for I think two weeks and a half and it was really hot inside of the apartment. And when we came back, all the leaves were drooped on the floor. We were afraid that the plant was dead. Then we watered the plant and in a matter of 30 minutes, all the leaves were up. So this is a really resistant plant. Definitely recommend. Also, it purifies the air inside of the apartment. The peace lily likes shade and uh, likes humidity. That's why it's optimal, especially if you live in a drier climate, drier apartment, to always spritz your plant. I do it once or twice per day, depending on how dry the room gets. The second plant that I wanna show you is this beautiful golden pothos or epipremnum and near it is Chinese lucky cat that we actually got from Thailand. Let me show the epipremnum. Oh. Uh, when we bought it one year ago, it just had uh, a full crown and all of these vines have grown since. And you see here, no, not here. You see here, we've cut this one uh, to be able to propagate the golden pothos even further. So I'll show you that a little bit later. Very easy to take care plant. Uh, you can put it on a table and it would spread beautifully or you can hang it and all of these vines just come down in this beautiful cascade. And we had the habit of keeping it in the kitchen where there is zero sunlight uh, for about a month and then putting it back here. And the plant resists really well the absence of light. The trouble comes when we need to open the chest of drawers because the leaves get stuck in here. And finally on this cabinet, uh, the last one, this is the Aglaonema or the Chinese Evergreen. And if you're wondering how I can remember the names of all of those plants in Leiden, it's not because I have a good memory. I just have my iPhone handy. We never had any problems with the plant. Like, if you can come closer, I can show you. It has this beautiful variegation, beautiful light green marbling. Always the same, doesn't depend on whether it's been watered too much or not enough sun. Uh, you know, we can put it near the window, we can put it in a dark corner, and it just looks amazing. At the beginning, I didn't think of it too much, uh, but the Chinese evergreen is definitely one of the top choices for people who are afraid of killing plants. And we're going to the queen. This is a bird of paradise or a strelitzia. Uh, it's a really big plant. So I think it goes up to two meters. It's potted in this beautiful basket that we brought from our last trip to India. We were looking for such a basket for a very long time. And when we bought it in India, we didn't have the measurements. We were afraid it would not fit the plant, but it fits perfectly. It likes sun, it likes moisture. So when it's dry, I find myself spritzing the plant 
uh, sometimes even up to four times per day because it likes moisture so much. And we have this huge problem and still have a huge problem with it. So you see how the edges of the plant gets this like dryness? It's because it has mold as we discovered, especially on this beautiful leaf. And I will attach um, uh, in the video an image, a photo of this leaf before the rot, you'd see like such a beautiful green leaf and now it's come up to this, so I think we'll have to uh, cut it. So overall, a really beautiful plant, but you know, plants are as kids. Uh, sometimes they get sick and you have to take care of them. Over here we have just one plant. This is the uh, Ficus Benjamin. Is that? Okay, when I bought it, it was like small and it had like a very cute crown, but in time the white edges have disappeared, now they are just light green, and I don't know, like it doesn't look like much, plus it's really pretentious. When we came here, it was super fussy, 90% of the leaves dropped, and then we had to take care uh, for like three or four months, I think, until it started giving new leaves. And uh, the people from the nursery told us when you move such small plants, small ficuses, they always react like this. So it seems like not a fair bargain for the effort. I mean, like, it's not that beautiful, but yeah. Oh, and this is a gift uh, for New Year's from my mom. Uh, she said the girl looks like me with the red hair. So I keep it here, golden pothos here, and we have a ficus, and you would see the mama plant in Eugene's office. So let's go to the second room. And here is Eugene's dungeon, and we have three plants here. Uh, the biggest one and the most impressive one is the rubber tree or the ficus, and um, it's a really beautiful it's a really beautiful tree. At the beginning, when we were at the nursery, I was kind of unsure should we get it or not, but now um, I understand that it's an absolutely beautiful plant, and I'll give you um, a, a round, a tour, a circle. A spin. A spin. <laughs> I'll give you a spin. So you see, we have a baby here, and then this plant has three babies. So after a while, we cut it, we put it in water and then wait for three, four weeks. Again, very, very easy to propagate, but really beautiful. So the ficus uh, likes indirect sunlight. I think it likes the soil to be a little bit dry. Again, it's really sensitive to drafts, to changing the position. We are guilty of not doing it as frequently as needed. You have to wipe the, uh, the waxy leaves because the more you wipe them, the more sunlight can the plant absorb. And here we have um, Sansevieria or mother-in-law tongue, or also they call it the snake plant. Uh, mother-in-law's tongue because it's very sharp, <laughs> like your mother-in-law's tongue. My mom doesn't like that um, name. If you consider yourself a plant killer, that's my number one recommendation plant to get. I honestly don't know what you could do to kill the plant. Overwater it, underwater it, put it in the sun, put it in the shade. It always thrives and has like this beautiful, yellow um, ridges. And the last one is the croton or uh, cordiaeum in Latin. Now this one has won my heart by its beautiful coloring. So all the colors from green to yellow, orange, red, burgundy, you can find in this plant. And otherwise we keep it um, in indirect sunlight. Now it's a really a foggy, cloudy day, but usually there's this curtain that shades them from direct light. We have decided to be uh, democratic and um, provide the pleasure of seeing the roots grow uh, in both the rooms for me and for Eugene. But you can see like the roots are so beautiful. I always thought the bigger the cutting, uh, the better the roots, but actually look at this ones. They are small and the root system is so developed. I 
planting everything will take quite some time so I decided to do it over the weekend plus uh, I was able to organize all the logistics so I have the cuttings on the right then I have the pots some uh, pre-moistened soil so I poured some water and massaged it and some of these rocks that you put at the bottom um, of the pot for uh, like to filter the water so the water doesn't get stale in order to have a lush beautiful plant you need around 12 to 15 cuttings per uh, ten, oh, oh, one 10 centimeter pot so you'll get something like this it definitely looks like a lot but i want to have a lush plant and in case any of the cuttings dies uh, it will still look beautiful so uh, let's start with the beginning let me show you the roots first so the roots are so long so to start we'll put some rocks because the pothos cuttings have been in water for a very long time i think over over a month now they will crave water for um, the next period of time so you have to water them more frequently than usual okay and we'll try to put them on the perimeter this was the cutting from from the top of the plant and actually grew really well how do we put it maybe like this yeah so i'll try that all of them are at the same level like the roots are at the same level so when i water the plants um you know there are no plants that get extra water and that get less water because the root roots are at different levels Maybe I need to be like less gentle with them because <laughs> right now I'm afraid to press on them. Okay. I think I need more soil for this. <laughs> this is turning into something really messy. Um, <laughs> so it looks a little bit messy now, but you get the point. Uh, the water will keep flowing from the bottom and then I'll just drain it so this one is done. The second attempt will be this beautiful ficus. We have five plants here and I'm just worried about this one plant. Like the roots are really beautiful in this form. But this one is a lonely ranger with just a small root. Um, however, it's the smallest plant so maybe once I put it in the ground it will actually flourish. I, I'm nervous because we have less of them and I don't want to mess up the roots or like rip them in any way. The pressure is real. Maybe should I need more? And then I cover everything with more soil. Here we go. And don't worry guys that it's so dirty. Um, I'll clean it afterwards. My hands are dirty, so I don't think I'll be able to do it right now. Same with the pot. Today I'll be replanting only this one that has very good roots. And this one will still stay in water because I'm afraid that if I'll uh, take it from water uh, to soil and it just has this small root, it will, not, it will not go well for it. So by now you already know the drill. Some rocks, some moistened soil. Also my mm -hmm. So after getting help from different sources um, and more and more soil, I think it's finally ready. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This was definitely a challenge for me and I have to clean all of this stuff up. But if you enjoyed this sort of video, put a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more expat, offbeat travel and uh, food. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.